Hi, my name is Ann Edenfield Sweet. I'm the executive director of Wings for Life, and we are so happy you are with us tonight. Wings for Life, we're trying to give you wings to fly for the rest of your life, but that life stands for life skills imparted to families through education. And tonight we have a wonderful speaker, Jen Zapone, who is 25 years of Toastmaster, has won the Distinguished Toastmaster Award, top award with uh, Toastmasters, and has served as the District 23 Director overseeing New Mexico and West Texas. Wow, we've got a dignity in our midst tonight, and we are going to learn about public speaking and why it's so important and communication, why that's so important. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I want to learn right away from Jen. So Jen, take it away. Thank you, Anne. Communication. It sounds really simple, doesn't it? Somebody talks and somebody listens. And we assume that all things being equal, everything in between is running smoothly. For instance, the cell phone signal is working. The sounds that are coming out are ones that you can understand and not speaking a different language. There's nothing interrupting it like a child's screech or maybe the honk of a car horn. Somebody talks, somebody listens, and we assume that communication has taken place. Not so much. The problem with communication is that the illusion that has taken place. How often have you sat in, say, a McDonald's line? You order a cheeseburger, you get a fish sandwich. You have not gotten the point across to whoever was taking the order to understand what you were, you were saying, how you were ordering it. An example from when I was in my Army Reserve unit. We were sitting in a whole room talking about a problem. To this day, I couldn't tell you what the problem was. The frustration, I remember well. I was talking and nobody was listening. Except for the staff sergeant that was four people away from me, my idea did not appear to me. I remember being so frustrated because nobody was hearing me. Was that because I was, was a woman? Or was that because I was quiet and shy? Were just my not loud enough that nobody heard my problem that was coming out of my mouth? I don't know, but the frustration with the lack of communication is real. What I'd like to talk to you about today is five instances where communication breaks down and how we can learn to deal with those breakdowns of communication. Those roadblocks when people don't understand exactly what we're trying to say. Communication seems very simple. You know, part of your exchanging of information or news or ideas. Again, this is really easy. The actual getting it done is a little bit more difficult. When we look at the possible reason for our signals not communicating to the other person or persons, there's five ways that I found that are the most likely for the breakdown in communication. One, the signal is not being received. Two, they're occurring at the same time. Three, the signal is garbled. Four, the receiver is disengaged. And five, the sender or the receiver is hostile. Break these down a little more. Your signal is not being received. Maybe somebody tuned you out or they went down a rabbit hole in their head and you weren't even on the same communication planet that they were. I remember sitting in a corporate office. We were all gathered around the intercom that was in the middle of the room. A voice came out of that intercom saying, Jen, you do X, Y, Z. And before I could respond, that voice was already on to the next subject. Later, that same voice in that intercom said, I agree with whatever she said. And indeed, I had not uttered a sound. The lesson learned here is to pay attention 
to who's on the receiving end of your communication. As a sender, as a person talking or trying to communicate, you want to make sure that they're paying attention to you. That they haven't tuned you out because their favorite song came on the radio or something distracted them. Maybe they were looking at something on TikTok on their phone. Whatever that might be, it's important to understand that you could be talking and they might not be listening. That works in reverse. If somebody is talking to you, are you listening to them? One of the things I've learned in Toastmasters when it comes to direct communication is really eye contact. My mother is partially deaf at the ripe old age of 82. For her to understand me, she has to look in my face and read my lips. Not because she's really practiced at it, but after 82 years on this planet, she kind of knows what sounds come out with the shape of my mouth. Is that the case when you're communicating? Are you looking at the person talking to you, making eye contact, listening to understand instead of listening to respond? The communication breakdown can happen on either side. And you are responsible for your own communication, depending on which side of the coin you're on. Look at instance number two. Signals occurring at the same time. My favorite example for this is a Johnny Cash concert. I'm a huge Johnny Cash fan. It goes back to when I was two years old. If you listen to a Dan Quinton album, the dialogue is when he's conversing with the inmates. One of the things he says is, I'm not going to talk for you later. And as he's talking, you can hear somebody shouting out. His words were, excuse me, I couldn't hear you while I was talking. Have you ever stopped and thought when you have two people talking at the same time? Communication is not happening. You're not listening to each other. You're too busy trying to communicate, but that signal is not being received. On either end, yours or the person that's talking at the same time with you. My lesson learned in this case is really the awareness of when that happens is when I'm quiet. And I wait till that person has stopped talking so that I can talk. It's really a waste of breath, if you will, if both of you are communicating at the same time. What are the courtesies of communication? Someone talks and you listen, and vice versa. The next one that I want to talk about today is the signals are garbled. You may think, I get it, my cell phone dropped and the signal was not there. Or maybe somebody was speaking a different language. That's possible as well. One of the things I found though, is we don't always understand people. We don't always understand how they're saying it. Case in point, when I was in college, I took statistics three times. First time, I got an F. The second time, I got an A. The third time, I got a C. That one really doesn't matter. It was because I needed a different statistics class in the first two. The point I'm trying to make is I didn't understand the first teacher at all, resulting in a failing grade. The second teacher made a lot more sense, hence the A. What I learned with that is patience. My lesson learned is curiosity. If I don't understand how somebody's putting a concept to me, I ask questions or I do my own research until I find the words that make sense to me. I think we often find that with our kids in school, or even ourselves, where we don't understand what is being trained, or they don't understand the math that the teacher's teaching, because it's not said in a way that they get it, or we get it. The key to here to this one is curiosity. Don't give up and say, oh, I'm never going to understand this. You guys, there's a way to understand it when you ask the right questions. And it's changing those questions up until it makes sense to you. Don't get frustrated and don't give up. Just get curious. 
look at number four. The receiver is disengaged. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just not paying attention. Have you had that happen to you before? Maybe you're in a doctor's office and you're standing there forever and ever and they're ignoring you because you can't get seen by the doctor. Or even a better one, my kids, I don't know how many times I've told them to clean the room and it's still not anything I would invite company in to go see. People have a habit of just not saying that they're ignoring you, they just do. And again, it's wasted communication. I can sit, stand as a speaker in a Toastmaster audience and I can tell who's really not listening. Are they looking on their phone? Are they reading? Are they texting somebody down the way? Communication isn't happening if both sides aren't engaged. It doesn't happen when they're not paying attention because they're really not involved in the conversation. Lesson learned? This is when it's time to stop and take inventory. Is there a reason they're ignoring you? Are they in pain? I've had that happen before. When I had knee surgery and my pain was so much that I wasn't really paying attention to what people were saying. Is it because they're not interested in the subject and they've got something else on their mind? Or they really don't want to hear what you're talking about, which is fine. But again, communication is not happening. When you're looking at that roadblock and trying to understand why they're not doing what you asked them to do, and it's the kids, you have to realize the communication did not happen. This is where you find another way to say it or check in and ask, like I said, there could be something else is going on and they're not paying attention for a reason or something else. Good number five, the sender or receiver is hostile. I can go back to the kid example. I can also go back to a heated argument in the corporate world, or maybe a fender bender on the street where two people are screaming at each other. When somebody has an opinion about something and it's very strong opinion where they're yelling at you, you have to change their mind by yelling back. There's a barrier to communication when it comes to something like that. We see that opinion where somebody might say the sky is blue and you insist that it's red. You're my child who's colorblind. I'm not even sure what you see when you look at the sky. The arguments are strong, but the way you win an argument is to shout at each other where neither one is prepared to listen. There's some really strong arguments out there and you could be right and wrong. But the real essence of communication is not happening. You're not gonna be able to convince somebody that the sky is red if they're not even willing to listen to you. A lot of times that happens because your voice is raised or you're not willing to listen in return. Communication is one of those give and takes that we talk about. We don't always have all the answers, but somehow we're more mired in that need to be right we don't want to hear that we might be wrong. How many times has that happened to you? I know I've been there several times in my existence on this planet. My lesson learned is to really recognize that communication has indeed not occurred at this point. It's important to understand where the breakdowns happen. Are you really getting your point across? Probably not. You're not going to change somebody's mind if they're not listening to what you're saying. Well, as we go over these five points and these lessons learned as far as your breakdown in communication, flip it around to a more positive look. How do we actually communicate? First, you have to have a message. What are you trying to say? Let's take our McDonald's or fast food restaurant example. You want to go to don't you? Hopefully, when you pull through the drive through and get to a spot where you're going to eat whatever you order, it's exactly what you ordered. 
So there's a strong message in your head to communicate exactly what you want. How do you say that? Are you clear and concise in your speech? Are you mumbled or garbled? Do you clearly enunciate that you want a hamburger instead of chicken? Sounds silly to have it so specific when you say that. But think of the traveling distance that that signal has to go through. It has to go through a microphone, which is probably seen its better days, through the mechanics and into somebody's ear. And I can't imagine where that ear has been, if you think about it. Where have that headphones been if that's the third person on that ship? Look. The clearer you can make your communication, more chance you have your voice is going to be heard and you're going to come away with the right order. The next thing that you have to understand when you're making communication is not only how your voice is coming across, but how are you delivering your message? Let's go back to the kid example. I've got two of those. I've got lots of examples of that. One of my favorite stories with my children is I understood that they were two different people. How they know that is at one point, I was really upset with my son. He was probably about 10 years old at the time. He was like, you have to do this. If you don't have to do this, come with your dad. This wife, and you're going to wipe down the rubber tree plant and get all the dust off of it. And he was like, Ah, mom, I don't know where I came up with that punishment. Nonetheless, it was a punishment to him. Two seconds later, his little sister comes around the corner and goes, Where's the cloth, mom? I want to do it. Communicate in two different ways one is a punishment, one is something somebody wants to do. How are you going to communicate the importance of something? if it's important to one person and not so much to the other. You gotta change the way that you say it. Everybody has a different filter that they've grown up with or they've developed through their years on this planet. Somebody might speak a different language or grow up in a bilingual situation or whatever that is where the language is a barrier. Maybe it was different parts of the country. As Ann said, I grew up in southwestern Pennsylvania. It's not our own lingo back there. When I came to New Mexico, nobody understood me because the language was just a little bit different. You've got to account for those changes as you move across the country or around the world. Does it mean the same thing? Not only that, think of the generations. Generations have changed how we look at a word and it changed its meaning along the way. This is where your curiosity kicks in. What does that mean to you? It might mean something totally different to me. Communication is about understanding, but it's digging deeper to understand how it's being said and what filters they're going through. Let me give you another example. One of my jobs, they threw out these, this acronym POC. From my time in the military, I always understood POC as point of contact. In this particular job, in that proof of concept, same three letters, two different meanings. It can be the same word with two different meanings based on how we've been raised. Those filters in our life really create a view, a lens that we look through when it comes to communication. When your signals are garbled and you're trying to get a point across, specifically when you're trying to train somebody or you're being trained, let's think about communication in that specific sense. Have you ever been frustrated because somebody really just don't understand it? I know, reference my statistics class, how frustrated I was with an F, how lost I felt because I really did not understand. There is no harm in asking questions. You probably heard everybody say there is no dumb question, and there certainly isn't. And if you feel dumb asking it, clarify it. 
use that one a lot. For clarification purposes, can you tell me what you really mean by that? And how about say it a different way that might make more sense to you? Communication is not easy. It takes a little bit of work. When it comes to coming up with a speech and getting my point across or being in front of an audience, there's a few steps I take to really look at communication. First of all, I look at my subject. What do you want to talk about? Do I have a good story to go along with my subject, my lesson that I'm trying to teach? Can I make it funny? Humor is really good when people want to learn something. And it catches the learning to the humor, which is a lot better than somebody yelling at you. I don't learn very well that way. And I look at the allotted time I have to get my point across. One of the things I've learned in Toastmasters is once we have this stand and we get this microphone, we want to talk forever and ever and ever and really not say anything. Have you been in that audience? I have more times than I can count. One of the things we teach in Toastmasters is how to get your point across in a certain amount of time. Five to seven minutes, usually. And why is that important? It helps you hone your message so it's clear and concise. You get your point across without anything extra that you don't really need. We look at us and ums. How many of you have heard a speech or sat in the audience where somebody was like, uh, you know, I don't know what um, she's talking about, but maybe, uh, hmm, you know what I mean? I'm not sure that um, maybe you got this, but uh, that hurt my ears. That was probably one of the biggest lessons I've ever learned when it comes to communication. It's all those filler words we use that we don't really need. Those annoy people more than they add to the communication and are more of a barrier than anything. Those whole 30 seconds of those words I said, I didn't say anything at all. The other thing we learn about is receiving feedback. Feedback is important to learn how to grow. You're not gonna grow if you don't know what's wrong. And it's not said in a way that you should say this, you should say that. You should use these clear, concise words like conundrum or copacetic. Not at all. It's a way to focus on the positive, what strengths you already have, and how you can grow within those strengths. I have a good friend who's an excellent storyteller. Her stories are amazing. She uses dialogue, she dresses up for it. That is not something my strong suit at all. I have another friend, very much into history, can spell times and dates and battles and so forth. And again, not my style. I'm much more easygoing and wanting to get my point across and make everybody laugh. I think there's power in that, but there's power in the story and there's power in the history lesson as well. Every one of us has our own special way that we communicate, that we feel comfortable in. The feedback is provided to help you grow within the comfort of that communication to make you a better speaker and a better communicator. I believe communication is important for everybody on this planet. I often use the example of the drive-thru. It's also important when you pick up the phone and call. When I was growing up in high school, I was very quiet and shy. I didn't even want to pick up the phone and call for pizza, and I would argue with my mom endlessly to make her do it. Every now and then I'd succeed in that. Why tell you that story? It's the power of growth. It's finding the people around you to support you and to get you out of your comfort zone. To find that story inside of you that can come out and help somebody else along the way. It might be slow. Goodness knows it took me a long time before I wanted to get up on a stage. Now I actually enjoy it. I want to tell my story. 
I want to have my voice and practice my voice. When I look at communication and wanting to get that voice out, I look at all these barriers before you. Any one of these barriers is a roadblock to communication. It's a roadblock to my message getting out. Whether somebody's not paying attention and the signal's not being received, whether everybody's talking at the same time, whether my signals are garbled and they're not understanding what I'm saying, whether they're disengaged and not really wanting to pay attention to what I'm saying at all, or whether I'm in a hostile environment and they want to be right and so do I. To me, communication comes down to awareness. You got to be aware if communication is happening or not. Do you have a message that you want to get across? Is it being received? Have they asked you clarifying questions? Do they know what you are talking about? Do you know what they are talking about? One of my favorite, favorite, favorite communication quotes is this one. I know you believe you understand what you think I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I said meant. Have you had that happen to you at any point in your life? Oh my gosh, this is my mantra. I say this a lot because I can see the light bulbs that are not turned on in somebody's eyes when I'm trying to talk to them about something. That's when I make the extra effort to find out what they misunderstood and what point of my message is not getting through. Communication is the easiest concept of all. But it's the one where we have the most problem with, where roadblocks come up all the time. How do you make it easier? Awareness. Make sure people are understanding what you're saying. Work on your message not being garbled. Be patient with yourself and others. And never ever give up on getting your message through. I know Toastmasters has helped me and keeps me on my toes when it comes to training and communication. Why I've probably done it for 25 years. Everybody needs practice with those skills because they don't come easy and you need them for the rest of your time on this planet. So tell me, can you hear me now? Back to you, Ann. Thanks, Jen. That was fantastic. Um, we are so happy that you're with us tonight and hope you learned as much as I learned about communication from Jen Zapone um, from Toastmasters and has won all the top awards with Toastmasters, and I can see why. Well, you know, I always close with a story, and this story is written by someone I don't know, uh, but it's called Leave the World a Little Bit Better. And I thought tying in communication, communication is the key to leaving the world a little bit better. So I thought this was a good story. So here we go. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote a poem on success. One of his measures of success in that poem was to leave the world a little bit better. Now that line has always stuck in my head. Emerson said that you have succeeded if you leave the world a little bit better, and I have made that line part of my life philosophy. When the tide goes out, there is a watermark where the water was. When the, wa when the waters of life recede from the shore of my being and my heart pumps for the last time, my desire is that there will be a mark where I stood. My aim is that the mark will say, for some decades, a woman occupied this space who saw others more important than herself and made an effort to leave the world a better place for them and those yet to come. Now, our society tells us that success is measured by bank accounts and power and beauty and wealth. These are often the results of hard work, luck, or birth. They are not evil and I strive for some of them daily. However, they are not the mark of success that I measure the success of my life with. 
So how do you do it? How do you leave the world a little bit better? Well, first, you give a percentage of your income away to a charity or a church. This makes your community better. You save a percentage of your income to pass down to your family when you leave. You volunteer your time for those who are less fortunate. And are you volunteering anywhere? Of course, you can always come to Wings. That's not part of the story. You mentor someone who needs a positive direction in life. You follow and get involved in politics. Our laws and leaders will determine the future. You could have a hand in that future. Or you can amass as much wealth as you can, spend it as fast as you can on the fading desires of your heart, and seek to please the first. Our culture might tell you that this is a success. Emerson tells us that it, it is not. So I encourage you to realize that the waters of your life will eventually withdraw from the shore. When it does, where will be the watermark? So, hope you've enjoyed being with us tonight talking about communication. Uh, for those of you on Facebook and YouTube, this is the end. For those of you who are on Zoom, stay put. We're going to put you into breakout rooms in just a second. So thanks for being with us. Hope you'll join us next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>